Welcome back, everybody, to Destiny of Music Season 2. So, we are going to split the podcast in half. So, the part where we do all the music stuff is going to go on to podcast. And all of our gaming is going to go on to YouTube. We figured that would be the most conducive way to get everyone the content that they're looking for. We're also going to branch out into talking about more than just musical instruments. Today we have the history of a musical genre known as techno. I definitely don't know about techno. Definitely. Let's learn about it together. We also have a shout out for Snow Snow, my cat. My favorite cat. My own cat. He can be our cat of the day. Exactly. Shall we play some techno music for people? Hey guys, um, I can also play the Tsunami Siren. And yeah, that's pretty much all. can be a tangle ball of confusion. At the best of times, this is especially the case when dealing with music that falls under the dance slash electronic umbrella. Techno has become even harder labeled today as there is so many subgenres that spawn from it. What used to be divided by just Detroit techno and German techno now includes acid, hardcore, dub, minimal, and many more. Basically, techno consists of a 4-4 synthesized kick drum, a BPM, or beats per minute, of 120 to 140, repetitive beats 
and loops using percussion instruments and the heavy use of synthesizers. It's often seen as a darker version of dance music, but not everyone adheres to that rule. That said, it does rely on percussive sound a lot more. The origins of techno. The majority consensus is that techno was born in Detroit, Michigan in the 1980s and early 90s. The credit is given primarily to three men who made up the Belleville Three, Derek May, Juan Atkins, and Kevin Saunderson. The official story is that the Belleville Three were the first to unleash techno upon the world, but that's not the entire ball of yarn. Over in Europe, another pocket of techno had been established in the 1970s, and people still debate to this day where the musical genre was actually established. Early DJ culture in the 1970s. Before Detroit techno was just a sparkle in anyone's eye, funk bands and disco DJs were the backbone of the city's music scene. Disco became such a big business that some of the swankiest clubs around made sure that it was playing whenever the doors were open. By the late 1970s, disco and dance music were being mixed in clubs, and many could see the change that was coming. Disco gradually fell out of the mainstream popularity, but it would live on through hip-hop, new wave, dance, dance punk, post-disco, house, and various electronic dance music genres, and of course, techno. The Detroit scene. The three schoolmates, May Sanderson and Atkins, of the Belleville Three were the front runners of the techno scene that may agree was born in Detroit. Influential DJ Eddie Folkless also went to the same high school as the trio, but despite making techno music, too, he was, wasn't considered part of the group. It was an exciting time to be a musician and a lover of music. Nightclub and radio DJs began shifting their focus from disco and dance to presenting the latest in techno. I hate that things have to be separated and dissected by race. To me, it shouldn't be white or black music. It should just be music. Atkins was quoted as saying in 2006, The Pioneers of Electronic. In another part of the world, someone else had already been toying with techno and electronic dance music, Kraftwerk. Funnily enough, Kraftwerk's initial inspiration was drawn from Detroit bands like MC5 and the Stooges. Where they came from, Kraftwerk were known as the Pioneers of Electronic Music, and the nickname spread fast. Although not everyone in Detroit had heard of the German band, the Belleville Three had enjoyed their work since they were teenagers, and their music provided great evidence of this. The evolution of techno music. It took very little time for techno to outgrow its humble beginnings and to make it into the mainstream nightclubs and radio stations of Detroit, Germany, and the rest of the world. However, once something is deemed mainstream, that is often a cue for people to wipe the board clean and start again with a new subgenre or two. Of all the ever-changing genres of music, techno has definitely evolved more than most. Once something has become a thing for so long, it's only a matter of time before a new wave of it arrives. As we mentioned earlier, techno is the result of this happening to dance music, so it shouldn't surprise you to hear that techno was eventually given the same courtesy. In order to stand out, or to just add to their own personal flavor to their music, techno artists began experimenting with the sound and falling out of the traditional techno guidelines. This isn't an extensive list of the techno sh- subgenres you need to hear, but it does cover some of the most popular. Acid techno. Also simply known as acid, acid techno was developed in Europe in the late 1980s to early 90s. Loosely put, it combines the efforts of harder techno and the squelching synthesizer sound found in Chicago Acid House. Dub techno. As the name suggests, dub techno incorporates techno with a reggae-seasoned offshoot of electronic music, dub. Dub techno employs 120 to 130 BPM, a four-on-the-floor beat, synthesizers, and other futuristic noises, as well as retaining retaining dub's delay-heavy production and leading bass line. Dub Techno also reworks old recordings in both their original and heavily modified forms. 
hardcore techno, the heavy metal of dance music. Hardcore techno originated in the early 90s from Belgium, Germany, and the Netherlands. Filled with ideas from hard-hitting 70s and early 80s industrial music, hardcore tends to hang around between 160 to 200 BPM, features many distorted noises, and boots your backside with violent kick drums and aggressive bass lines. Minimal techno. While still appreciating the essence of techno music, minimal techno tries not to rock the boat or change things up too much, and it can even dip its toe into being a bit of trance at times. There aren't too many rules to follow if you want to make minimal techno, as long as there's a drum and a bass line. You just need to make sure that you don't add too many layers and or effects on top. Not all of the innovators of techno have come from Detroit or even the 1980s. With each passing decade, techno and artists evolve and fresh faces took center stage to carry the sound onto the next generation. Here's a brief list of some of the most influential acts since techno's inception. Kraftwerk, The Belleville Three, Carl Cox, Daft Punk, and The Prodigy. Once the scenes in Detroit and Germany began picking up speed, techno got everywhere. As well as spreading across the U.S., interest in the music made its way across Europe and even converted many who were already neck deep in the dance music culture. Techno was introduced in clubs and at raves and music festivals, which eventually gave it the leg strength to accommodate groups of clubbers going on vacations purely for the music. Like with other subgenres of dance music, techno became a favorite for many, with its strange ability to captivate and communicate with us. How's that, you ask? While studies in the late 1990s show that techno music can have a hormonal effect on those listening to it. Techno music today. Because the gift that is the internet, both the amount of techno music written and where it can be heard has increased dramatically. Not only do today's musicians have access to more and cheaper methods of making sound, but they no longer need to rely on record labels. Operating within close proximity to them gigs, fans, film projects that need soundtracks, and even industry, bigwigs from the other side of the globe were now within reach. Fast forwards 20 years to... The connectivity. Social platforms offer mixed with the host of streaming sites online means it couldn't be easier to find or make something new and exciting. What did you learn? I learned that techno music is really old. (laughs) Not. It's one of the newest genres of music. You think it's old? Yeah, because it's the 1970s. For me, that's a long time. Yeah, for me, that's a long time, too, but it's not that old. Goodbye, and see you next time, I guess. Probably. That's all from us on Destiny of Music for this episode, guys. See you next time. Thank you. Bye.